السلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الله my brothers just some confessions I didn't know Bakr very well I only met him about a month ago before I went to Hajj but والله the effect this brother has had on me no other brother has had in such a short time you boys know him better than me so I'm not going to act like I know him but wallahi, every time I came to see him, the smile was on his face. Wallahi, my brothers, you stand here feeling sorry for him. By Allah, I tell you, you should feel sorry for yourself. This man, by Allah, died an honorable death. And now that he's dead, I can praise him. Because when I was there, I didn't want to throw dust in his face. But I have never seen the likes of this boy. Never. My brothers, you come here to the grave. You come to the cemetery for you to understand, for you to see, for you to comprehend, for yourself, for your benefit, for your change. <coughs> this man, you might see him say, poor man, he had cancer. I tell you, he was fortunate enough to have cancer. He had time to think about where he's going. He had time to think about what he's doing. He had time to repent to Allah. I was with him a day before he died. He's telling me just before I got cancer, I had a house on the river. I sold it. Something in my heart just wasn't feeling right. Oh, no, 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 no. How many of us were drowning and drowning in the river? Drowning and drowning in finance and interest. And you can justify it how you want. Some sheikh under the bridge somewhere gave you a fatwa somehow, somewhere. This is your problem. But by Allah, the only sin. The only sin that Allah ever declared war, Allah declares war, is river. How many of us were drowning and drowning in river? And then what? You think this little 600 square meters that you're buying and that you're going to war with Allah, you think it's worth it? This is your real home. This is your real house. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ and what is this world? What do you take with you? When I was there, the brother was saying, he's sick with cancer, vegetabilized in his bed, didn't miss a single prayer. <laughs> Not in Jama'ah. You're young, you're fit, you're healthy, your car's outside and you still don't pray. Don't feel sorry for him, feel sorry for yourself. By Allah, I take a custom by Allah Azza wa Jal. The last thing he did when I seen him, the last thing, yeah, I want you all to bear witness. He gave me this money and said, Allah. give it away in charity for me, please. Allah. Allah. Can you see this? This Allah. is an amana. He said to me, give it away in charity for me, please. Distribute it however you like, Hublos. He said to me, do whatever you please with it. How many of you now, you're holding on to your money, aren't you? Wallahi, he died an honorable. I've watched many people. So calm. So peaceful. So relaxed. So white in his face. He had a smirky smile the whole time. He had this smile on his face. I'm thinking, man, wait, wait, tell me where you are, Bakr. Because I want to be there, man. So don't feel sorry for him. Wallahi, my brothers, feel sorry for yourself. <coughs> Where are we going with our lives? My brothers, haven't you come to see? Wallahi, over the last few days, just over the, in me, me, my little humble life, my friend, for those of you who know him, Ahmed Dabusi, was with me in Hajj. He went to Lebanon to pick up his family, came back, his six-year-old kid died. Two days ago, no excuses. Six years old. Bakri, your friend, younger than most of you, Allah took his life. My uncle yesterday, yesterday, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his life. My brothers, this world is so temporary, you have no idea. This world, the Prophet of Allah, your Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, maybe, you know what, maybe I'm an extremist. Maybe I have some extreme views, but your Prophet is speaking. He says, Kun fid dunya ka'annaka gharib aw abiru sabil. Your Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, be in this world like a stranger, like a traveler like a wayfarer, this world that we're all in love with, this world that we're all competing over, 
this world that we're killing ourselves over, this world that we brothers that don't talk to each other anymore. Have you seen this? Blood brothers don't talk to each other anymore. People that grew up over money, women, cars, business, trivial problems, they don't speak to each other anymore. This world, this world that we're hanging on to, the Prophet of Allah, he says, this world, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's so trivial, it's transit. It's transit. Any one of you been on an international flight? Anyone been on an international flight? You stopped in Dubai or maybe you stopped in Abu Dhabi? How long were you there for? An hour? Two? Three? Any one of you ever in Dubai or Abu Dhabi? Did the thought ever cross your mind? Maybe I should buy a house here? Any one of you while in Dubai ever think, you know what? Maybe a business opportunity in this place? <coughs> Did any one of you while sitting in Dubai think to himself, you know what? I have a couple of hours. Let's try getting married. You didn't. Why? Because your mind and your heart was not in Dubai airport. Rather, it was at your destination. I know I'm leaving. My connecting flight is in a few hours. Gate 58. What do I want from this airport? And similarly, my brothers, this world is transit. This world is Dubai and Abu Dhabi. It's an illusion. It's not real. What do you take with you? What do you take? What did he take? Did you see him? Because I wrapped him up. I can assure you he was naked. No pockets in here. No Gucci and Louis Vuitton in here. No Mercedes, BMWs and MGs in here. Nothing. Nothing. There's no women in there. No children in there. The Prophet of Allah, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, يَتْبَعُ الْمَيَّةَ ثَلَاثَةً Three things. Three things they follow the grave. Listen, my brothers, Wallahi, I'm begging you for yourself. Don't stand here and be entertained by me. And Wallahi, yeah, I showed my face. And I would, for your heart, your heart, this heart needs to move. This heart needs to move. Why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? If it is not to worship Allah, then to do what? To do what? يَتْبَعُ الْمَيَّةَ ثَلَاثَةَ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعَمَلُهُ Three things that follow the dead man to the grave. His family, his friends, his money, and his actions. فَيَرْجِعُ اثْنَيْنِ وَيَبْقَى وَاحِدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم He says, two things will come back. Your family and your friends and your money. Look at us, we're all here now. But I challenge. Wallahi, I challenge anyone to be here in one hour time. Allah will throw some dirt. Jana, man, I'm hungry, bro. Let's go grab a feed, man. Allah, arhamu, bro. All your life. You want to see true friends? See who stays behind. All your life gone. What are you left with? Your amal. If you prayed, wallahi, you're going to see the nur of that prayer in here. If you gave in charity, you're going to find that in there. But if you are neglectful, by Allah, you're going to also find that in there. This little hole here is either a garden from the gardens of paradise. Or it's either a pit from the pits of hellfire. You decide. You decide, my brothers. Let today be a turning point in your life. My brothers, wallahi, you know, I'm not going to have a go at anyone, you know. I've been so moved by this brother's death. So humbled by the fact that I was invited and allowed to be here. I've never seen anyone have a better death. In, at, at least in my lifetime, I've never seen a better death than this. At least in my lifetime, I've never seen a better one. But it's not him I'm concerned about. It's the hundreds that surround me. They're going to walk away feeling guilty for a couple of minutes, jump back in his car like as if nothing ever happened. My brother, let this day be a turning point in your life. Can't you see? Can't you see? Every soul shall taste death. Allah, every soul shall taste it. 
You cannot escape this, my brothers. If anyone was not going to die, then surely it would have been Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But even he had to die. <coughs> what makes you think you're so special or that you're so unique or that you're going to escape? You're not. Understand. Make a move. Repent. Turn back to your Lord. How much longer will you no longer pray? How much longer will you continue to not pray? Look, wallahi, I don't understand. Your boss gives you a couple of hundred dollars. You know, my brothers, forgive me, man. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, I'm a bit harsh. But forgive me for my shortcomings. You know what it means to worship? Does anyone know what it means to worship? To worship means you obey. Wallahi, most of us worship our bosses. Our wives, our children, our our our, 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 our our social environment, we worship them more than we worship Allah. And that's the truth. Your boss tells you to be there at 6. You're there at 5.50. Because I want to show him, hey, I'm not like the rest. Allah tells you be there at Fajr at 4.30. Brother, do I really have to be there, man? You really want me to wake up now, jump in my car and go pray Fajr? Brother, what are you smoking, man? You're on some exclusive crack. Your boss for a couple of hundred dollars, you'll drive an hour. But Allah, who created you, who fashioned you, who sustained you, who allowed you to come in this world, who allowed your heart to beat every single beat and your lungs to take every single breath, the one that was there for you when you were neglectful, when you were negligent, Allah was there, Allah was there. Your heart, every beat, even when you were sinning, your heart seeks permission from Allah. Allah says, beat. Beat, beat, don't worry, I'll deal with him later. And still, no salah in your life, no fasting in your life, no Quran in your life. For my sister, still, no hijab in their life. Still, Allahu Akbar, where are you going? Your boss for a couple of dollars. Excuse me, you work like a donkey. But for Allah. Yani, please tell me, what does it benefit to Allah whether you pray or you don't? But Allah from His love for your sake, He says, Ya Abdi, pray. <coughs> so you may be successful. I don't want anything from you. We're neglectful. We're neglectful. You know what this brother taught me? Please, Wallahi, mark this somewhere, wherever. We're so in love with this world. We're so competing over this world. Our focus, our fikr, our, our wallahi, our everything. You wake up thinking about this world. You go to sleep thinking about this world. You worry, you stress, you're concerned. Everything is this world. This world, my house, my car, my money, my status, my wife, my children, me, 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 everything. You think you're chasing happiness. You know what happiness is? Wallahi, this brother taught it to me. Happiness is not how much you have. Happiness is how much you can live without. Happiness is not how much you have. What good is it that you drive a Lambo and you live in a mansion, but you're taking sleeping pills just to fall asleep, man? What good is it? What good is it that you're, you're injecting yourself with juice? Allahu Akbar, bench pressing this, that and the other. But a little blanket you can't lift off yourself at 4.30 in the morning to go worship your Lord. What good is it? Happiness is not how much you have, my brother. Wallahi, it's not. Happiness is how much you can live without. Ask yourself, is my heart content? Is my heart content even though I don't own a home? Is my heart content even though I don't drive my desired car? If your heart is content, Wallahi, you are a very wealthy man. But if you're stressing, <laughs> But if your heart is stressing, Wallahi, my brother, you are so far from happiness, you have no idea. I'm not going to drag this on. I'm sure you know where I'm going with it. 
My brothers and sisters, please repent. Please come back to your Lord. Please understand that death awaits every single one of you. Every single one of you. Death does not know numbers, doesn't know color, doesn't know race, doesn't know religion, doesn't know he's from the north or the south or the east or the west. Death doesn't know. Death waits upon Allah. Hey Allah, do I get his soul or not? Waiting for the order. Bring his soul. He goes and he gets. Doesn't question. Don't you understand, my brother? Every one of you. You're sitting here crying over a bucket. Every single one of you. Last night, every one of you was dead. Alone. Every one of you was dead last night. What's the dua when you wake up? Who knows? Alhamdulillah, Alladhi, Ahyana Ba'dama, Wa Ilayhi. All praise be to Allah, the one that gave me life after he gave me death. Every one of you was dead last night. Who allowed you to wake up? Was it your money? Was it your car? Was it your house? Who allowed you to wake up? I know it's easy on the tongue, Allah. But the heart, the heart, who allowed you to wake up? And for what did you, what, why did Allah allow me to wake up? Wallahi, my brothers, it's to worship me. This world is so trivial. Don't waste your life, my brothers and sisters. Don't waste your life. Come back to your Lord. Repent to Allah and make a move. Wallahi, for your sake, let today be the day I started praying. Let today be the day, you know, I pray on and off, then make it a permanent on. Let today be the day I make an initiative to do something good, at least for my own self. For my sisters, let today be the day that I wear my hijab permanently, never to take it off again, inshallah. We want to learn from this experience. Not just stand around like zombies, give salams, and walk away with dead hearts. But to make a change in your life. Make a change now, today. My brother, don't waste your life. Wallahi, you don't know when death is coming. You don't know. Bakr was fortunate enough to know that it's coming, it's knocking on my doors, it's creeping up. He was able to change and to repent and to fix what he had to fix. Most of us will not be this lucky. Don't play Russian roulette with your life. Don't play Russian roulette with your life. You only have one for crying out loud. Come back to Allah. Don't you understand? He loves you. You will never find happiness. You will never find contentment anywhere. Go. I've been. I've seen. I've tried. You will never find happiness. You only find it with the Lord of happiness, Allah. Everything you're looking for. Allah possesses it. But like scavengers, we're going around like wild beasts, trying to find our own happiness, our own success, failing to understand that it's all with Allah. Just go back to Him, man. Your personal problems, Allah. Your financial problems, Allah, solution. Marital problems, Allah, solution. Family issues, Allah, solution. Business, Allah. Ummah, Allah. Country, Allah. Personal, Allah. Allah. Come back to your Lord. Come back to your Lord, my brothers. I'm begging you, man. For your sake, I don't benefit from this. I'm not getting paid to be here. But for your sake, those sisters that are going to be watching this, don't look at your friends and your sisters. You make a move. You be the person to instigate the change 
That is much needed. <coughs> Who's ready? I don't want that Lebanese, inshallah. I want the real, inshallah. Genuine promises that from this day forward, I will change my life for the better. Who's ready? Sincerely. Well, that's a promise between you and Allah. And if you're a man, then you hold your word. My brothers, we make dua for Bakr. And I'm going to say very few quick words. I'm going to hand it over to Abu Omar. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make Bakr from the people of Firdaus al-A'la. And we ask him to give him the suhba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to make him from the people of the chambers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make Bakr from the people that there is no hisab for them. There is no accountability for him on the day of resurrection. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his grave a garden from the gardens of paradise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the hellfire haram on him permanently. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the grave, the punishment of the grave and the punishment of the day of resurrection, and the punishment of hellfire haram on him permanently. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give some much needed, some much needed support and help and comfort to his wife, to his daughter, to his family, to his brother, his mom, his dad, to all those loved ones. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our hearts and to make this day a day of change, a day of positive, real, genuine, positively moving forward. Bi idnillahi ta'ala. Wa salli ala Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دفن أحد أصحابه قال استغفروا لأخيكم وسلوا له التثبيت فإنه الآن يسأل فننشغل بهذا الدعاء اللهم اغفر لبكر اللهم ثبته عند السؤال اللهم اغفر لبكر اللهم ثبته عند السؤال My brothers, the best thing you can do for your brother now, this is the advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're going to hear a lot of opinions and you're going to hear a lot of stories. But wallahi, the most authentic, the most sahih, the best thing you can do for your brother Bakr is dua. Dua. So increasing your dua for him. And there's an amana, one of the brothers. Where's Ayman? He's out on the... You've been full with you? Malash, uh, something slightly unique. Uh, Bakr gave Ayman a box of sweets before he died. And he's going to hand them out. And he's asking sincerely that everyone that takes a sweet, he wants nothing. Except that tonight in your tahajjud, at least half an hour, at least half an hour before Fajr, you make dua specifically for Bakr. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept. So please stay back and take, and take one of those sweets. Inshallah with your right hand, grab some dirt.